As I just mentioned, our investigation question is, what happens to atoms during a chemical reaction? Now, you may remember from our phase change unit that we call the amount of matter in an object its mass. We can take measurements at the macroscopic scale of how much matter or atoms and molecules are in a substance by finding out the mass of the substance. Remember, we can use something called a scale to do this. So if we are trying to learn more about what happens to atoms during a chemical reaction, we might be able to collect some evidence by finding the mass before and after the chemical reaction takes place. Today, we are going to find the mass before and after for two different reactions. The first is by mixing Alka-Seltzer and water. Now, as I mentioned, if you have Alka-Seltzer at home and you have either a Ziploc bag or a container and some saran wrap, you can follow along with this investigation. The Alka-Seltzer and the water react to cause a new substance to be formed. And so we are going to be taking the mass of the reactants, the Alka-Seltzer and the water, and then the product that is formed. Another type of chemical reaction is burning. And we are going to go ahead and burn steel wool. So we are going to go ahead and take the mass before and after to see how the steel wool changes over time. So I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video and gather any supplies that you may have around the house the last thing, as you know, that we might need uh, is a scale so that we can find the mass. Um, many different types will work. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the one that I have. So if you have these materials, pause the video, go ahead and grab them. If not, no worries. You can follow along and I will do it here and you can still see the results. So let's get started. All right, you guys, so as I mentioned, we are going to start off with our Alka-Seltzer and water reaction. Um, you'll notice that I'm wearing some protective goggles, um, but this shouldn't be something that's dangerous. So if you don't have these, just make sure that you have an organized space where you're not going to knock anything over um, and that you wash your hands after you do uh, this investigation. So I actually have already found the mass of the reactants. And to do that, I found the mass of the beaker with my water, my uh, saran wrap, and the water inside um, because I'm going to put everything in here. So I don't want to have to do calculations of just figuring out the water. It's okay. That's where I'm going to put the tablet. And then the tablet, together I've added these and I found that it is 132.05. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our data table um, here that our reactants, oops, let's go back, uh, are 132.05 grams. So that's including the beaker um, and the saran wrap, but that's okay because I'm going to include those in my final um, calculations as well. So as I mentioned, we are going to mix these together. I'm going to move this back, zoom out a little so that you can see our setup. Let's hold this down so that we can take a look. And I am going to put my Alka-Seltzer tablet into um, my beaker of water and we are going to see the reaction that takes place. So let's go ahead, drop it in. I'm going to really quickly cover this up. We want to make sure it's a nice closed system. And maybe you can see already the reaction is starting to occur. You might notice uh, that here we have the Alka-Seltzer tablet that is moving around. It's mixing um, and there's bubbles occurring. You might be able to hear the fizzing. You might also notice that this is turning pink. So we really have a lot of evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place here. 
And right now my scale reads 132.05. So we're gonna let the reaction occur. Um, I'm gonna lift it so you guys can see it a little closer. Lift some of the saran wrap up so you can see the bubbles in here, which means uh, one of the products is actually a gas, but I'm trapping it in here um, with my closure. You might notice the top of the container has kind of got a little larger where the gas is filling. And my reaction is fully underway. And I have a reading of 132.05. So I'm going to close out. And, okay, this is interesting, 132.05 grams. So I'm going to move this to the side and, and come back to join you guys. This is meaning that the reactants, if we are measuring correctly, and the products actually have the same mass. So when I mix these two together, I did see that the tablet disappeared into the water um, and became something new, but my mass is still reading 132.05 grams. So that's telling me that all of those atoms that were in the reactants are still there in the products. Really interesting. So our next investigation, we are going to take a look at steel, wool, and oxygen. Um, we are going to do a reaction of it burning. And um, of course, it's really difficult for us to, to take the mass of the oxygen when it's just in the air. Um, but when I do my reaction, then uh, we are hopefully going to see them reacting together. So here is my steel wool. Um, as you can see, it's kind of this grayish color. Got it all spread out. And just like before, I'm going to find, include the beaker in my mass of the reactants. So I'm gonna put my steel wool in here, spread it out nice and big. And I have a reading of 61.5. So I'm gonna make sure I record that for my reaction, 61.5 grams. Um, and as I mentioned, we are doing a burning reaction. So I'm going to go ahead and burn our steel wool, um, and that is a reaction with oxygen, and we are going to see what happens. So let's take a look. So you might notice we've got the burning happening. I'm gonna actually get in here and make sure it's really all kind of catching. parts. There we go. So I'm burning my steel wool. Really interesting. There we go. Make sure I get all of this in here. Great. One last So you might notice that as I'm burning the steel wool, you might notice um, on the screen it's becoming darker. So it's changing into something else. It's no longer the steel wool. That gray is turning into kind of this darker, darker color. Um, so let's see. And I think it's not really reacting much anymore. Get it in here and try one more time. There we go, we still got some reaction occurring. There we go, we'll let it run out. All right, so my steel wool is a little hot, but you might notice it is kind of turned into that darker, darker color. It's changed. And when I mass this, I am getting a mass of 61.55 grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that here. 61.55 grams, interesting. So 
this is a little bit different than our first reaction. Um, and here we see that the reactants are actually less, which is kind of surprising, actually. Um, this is telling us that there are more atoms in our, our result or our products than there were in the reactants. Um, and that is maybe something expected, unexpected. We maybe were thinking that our atoms were going to disappear in a burning reaction, but this is telling us that that actually does not happen. So we want to read a little bit more about this burning reaction to really understand how this works uh, because our results are not fully matching here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to turn off my pen and go and take a look at what we're going to do next. <laughs> 